Good morning. Please join us and stand as we sing our worship songs. This is Amazing Grace and Soul on Fire. Words will be on the wall.
This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You lay down your life. That I would be set free. Whoa, Jesus, I say.
please join me in the call of worship. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Things in heaven and earth. Whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, authorities. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So that what is seen was not made out of what was visible.
please join me in the opening prayer? Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise Him in all His angels. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the skies. Church. Sorry about all the technical difficulties as we started. Um, I'll own most of those. Um, being Children's Sunday, it seems like one of our five-year-olds decided to remix the sound for us. So sorry it was a little over loud, um, uh, but we're back to normal now. I'm really glad you're here. Kids, we're glad you're here. We love that you're part of our church and um, in every aspect. And we're excited uh, for the additional things you're already going to share with us. Please note uh, the colored insert. Uh, first of all, please note... Hey, please note I have last week's bulletin. It's been one of those mornings. Please note this awesome cover. This was done by Jackson McKinley, first grade. How about that, huh? Is that amazing? Good job, Jackson. Please note the other things uh, going on in your bulletin as we head into summer. Um, we, uh, we're going to talk about uh, things coming up, our, our, our Sunday school, um, summer Sunday school, Joanne. Um, how many of you kids like ice cream? I do. How many of you would like to be that kid right up there? Yeah. You, yeah, okay. You can be a part of my ice cream party on September 17th this fall if you are a part of my pastor's book club this summer. We used to do this a lot. Uh, we've kind of not done it the last few years, but I'm rolling it out again. And this summer's book is The Hiding Place by Corey Ten Boom. And um, there's two versions. There's a young readers version. They look almost the same. And there's an adult version. Parents, uh, kids, look for the young readers edition up in the top corner. It's for ages eight. It says nine, but you kids are advanced. Eight and up. If you can read, you can probably read it. Parents, you can read this to your kids. I remember when my kids were little and just learning to read, we used to read books out loud to them. And this is a chapter book, but it's got pictures and it's designed. Corey Ten Boom, you may have heard about her. Uh, very famous because her and her family um, hid Jews during World War II when the Germans were trying to hunt them down. And uh, she also... Um, ended up in a concentration camp herself. So a great story of how her faith triumphs. There's books downstairs because of the chaos of the morning. I haven't pulled them out of the box yet, but outside the library there's two bookshelves for sale for Holden Days, which Don will mention in a moment. Um, you can um, grab the books there, adults, and, and uh, be a part of the book. How many think you're going to read the book with me, kids? Ice cream, 
Come on, AJ, ice cream. <laughs> Okay, close your eyes with me. You ready? Close your eyes and listen. street or riding your bike or driving, you're playing at the playground, you're out behind the library, and you're hearing that playing all over the center of town from our steeple. The congregation a couple weeks ago voted to move forward with a fundraiser to try to restore the chimes. We used to have chimes that both played here in the sanctuary from the organ and from the steeple, but they haven't worked for decades. And um, we voted to start a fundraiser, and you'll be getting a letter uh, sometime this month. Um, we'll have an exact price for you by the time the letter goes out, but it's like $20,000, $25,000. But if we all pitch in, we can restore the chimes. And I'm excited about it. And think, for our 275th anniversary to be broadcasting, and we did check with the town, we won't be breaking any ordinances, um, hymns of the faith. Um, on holidays and special days and maybe once or twice a week, uh, letting people know that after 275 years, we're still alive and we're still here and we're still proclaiming the gospel. So I'm excited about that. Watch for that letter. We're trying to get it done by the fall. It is kind of a rush. If we can't get it done by the fall, we'll definitely get it done but later. Uh, but see it and if you feel so led, uh, please give generously to that. Yay. <laughs> Don Lang. Brightest guy in the room. Thanks from the funniest guy in the room. But looks aren't everything, so. Hey, it's hard to believe that Hold the Days is back on the radar. It's not distant radar, but it's out there. So uh, take out your uh, blackberries and blueberries and A's, uh, whatever you got, and uh, I don't know. August 26th, Saturday, August 26th, is our annual Holden Days yard sale and barbecue. And for some of you might not know that that's one of our biggest events we have, and therefore it's also one of the most labor-intensive days uh, up to and including the day of the sale. Uh, I never have any trouble with everybody signing up for the day before the sale and the day of the sale. You guys always come through. But there's many, many hours that are spent in the weeks before the sale, marking, collecting, boxing, sorting, all this stuff that people donate to us to sell. In recent years, we have tried to share, I've developed a system that we're trying to share this and spread it out a lot more. So what I'm gonna have, you're gonna see a new sign-up sheet out there. Well, it's not new, it's been for the last couple years, but there's gonna be the six weeks prior to that, starting in mid-July, we're gonna have two sessions a week where people can sign up to, to kind of ramrod the, the, uh, the marking of the stuff and the boxing. So from Monday through Friday evening will be one, and Friday evening through Sunday would be another. So there'll be six opportunities during the week and six opportunities on the weekend for you to sign up. Now, it would be our hope that what you'd be doing is going out and getting your friends, the people sitting near you, maybe in the pews, so you might start writing down who's sitting near you, uh, so that you can get your own little cadre together to help us do that. Now, just because you're signing up to Ramrod, it doesn't mean you're going to be the only one. We have seasoned markers who will be helping train you, set up to show you the system, system we use and stuff like that, and also, if necessary, to help you. Um, now, just because you sign up for a period of days doesn't mean you have to be at the church all those days. What you need to do is peri periodically, hopefully every day, you'll stop by at some point and see what's there and then plan your work accordingly. Now, if you show up, if you're scheduled Monday through Friday and you show up on Thursday afternoon, that could be a problem. But we will uh, work with you and help you in any way we can. 
Um, again, the object of the whole thing is to get the work spread among as many hands as we can. So I'll be downstairs after here and most Sundays by the sign-up sheets, answering questions, stuff like that. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Thanks, Don, for your ongoing efforts with Holden Days. We do appreciate it. Um, next week is Father's Day, and there's a special concert here on uh, Friday, uh, Sunday night. Uh, see that in your bulletin, um, featuring our former organist, Barbara Otto, and some members of our church. Come on up to that if you'd like. And then in two Sundays, we'll be out at Trout Brook, uh, worshiping in the woods with another barbecue. And by the way, today, everyone's welcome to stay uh, and enjoy a barbecue and uh, some food and fun. And there's a, there's a bounce house out back and everything. We've had a great year in Sunday school, and uh, we want to celebrate that now. Kids, you've been great. And every year we do a little slideshow. If you want to watch it front, we've got a slideshow of pictures featuring almost all of you from Sunday school. Usually, I do, I do most of the tech around here, but I usually don't do this slideshow, but I did it this year. And what a joy. Kids, I want you to know, I love you. And I'm so glad you're here. And it was just exciting to do it. And here's one thing I noticed, adults. In this year's video, I noticed more teenagers teaching and assisting in high school than I've ever, in, in Sunday school than I've ever noticed before, and more adults who don't have kids in Sunday school. I know every adult who has kids in Sunday school feels they have some kind of obligation, but blessings to those of you who have no kids in Sunday school but are teaching. So that's a plus for us as a church. Watch this video. I'm so wonderfully made. I am. You're so wonderfully made. Yes, you are. God has made us in a special way. We're so wonderfully made. How about you, Julie? I can blink my eyes. Wait, Danielle? I can jump so high. Wait, cause I'm so wonderfully. You're so wonderfully. We're so wonderfully made. Hey, Mark! I can clap my hands for you. Monique! I can sneeze my nose at you. At you! Yes, cause I'm so wonderfully. You're so wonderfully.
all you do. In fact, what we'd like to do now is just spend a moment just sharing our thanksgiving and appreciation for all those who make things possible. Um, namely God and through us, working through us. The first person I want to recognize uh, this morning is John Markloff. John, if you want to come up. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate John so much this past year. As many of you know, we're kind of in a transitional phase in youth ministry. Uh, we have more kids than ever on Sunday mornings. You saw the pictures up there. Our confirmation class is the biggest ever. Our middle school is the biggest ever. But we are struggling trying to um, get youth group going. And John came to me the end of last year and said, you know what? I can help. What can I do? I'll take one of the positions. We were looking for both positions. Uh, John stepped into youth ministry, and I really appreciate it, John. Um, he persevered. It hasn't been easy this year, uh, but he's done a great job as far as I'm concerned. And, John, we appreciate all that you've done. And we have a little gift for you to say thank you and thanks for your John is not leaving the church, of course, but John is stepping down out of the position, and as some of you at the congregational meeting know, uh, we're moving in a little different direction, trying to get a seminary student, and really hoping uh, we can go forward with the assistant pastor with an emphasis in youth ministry idea down the road. So, thank you so much, John. Now for the kids, there are two ladies that put in a lot of hard work, and I always like to recognize them. Uh, one is Mrs. Hamill. <coughs> You can come up with her serenity. I sure like Miss Shadow. Serenity is Mrs. Hamill's assistant today. Um, Laura does a great job um, managing our children's chapel, and I never get to go there, and some of you do teach Sunday school. Um, but not only does she teach the kids the songs that you're going to hear today, which are great, uh, she also does the Lord's Prayer with them and communion with them and teaches them about the elements of worship that they don't see here. So, Lord, we really appreciate you and appreciate all that you do for our kids. And you can never quit. <laughs> so, here's a gift. Thank you for all you do. She'll share that with you. I should have given it to you to carry down. And uh, Joanne Peterson. Where's Joanne? Joanne, Joanne is our third coordinator of children's ministry in three years, but you can't quit either, Joanne. You, Joanne has done a fantastic job this year, really. I wanted her to sing a musical number to tell you all um, how she feels about it, but she was unwilling. But Joanne, thank you so much. Our Sunday school is running awesome. You are a great organizer and coordinator and very creative, and we really appreciate your effort this year. And here's a little gift for you. I will uh, put it down over here for you. 
and uh, hand you the mic because Joanne would like to say thank you to all of her helpers as well. You sure you don't want to sing? I'm sure. I'm sure they don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> um, can I have all my teachers and assistant teachers and nursery care helpers and volunteers stand up so we can recognize you? All right, let's give them a round of applause. All right, keep it down and relax. <laughs> um, without your help and dedication and all that you do in the classroom, all the excitement you bring to the stories of Jesus, we wouldn't have such an amazing children's ministry program. Thank you for taking those three months out of your time and dedicating them to the kids that you see here. They will never forget the lessons and the stories. They will have them forever. You have. We are so blessed to have you all. And to thank you for a little bit more, we have a nice bag that says Amazing Love. And a beach towel, there's six different designs. So choose one, get your toes in the sand this summer, and enjoy. <laughs> and come back feeling a little refreshed, because we need you, and we really appreciate you. Thank you. Um, in the children's chapel and in the Sunday school, we collect a children's offering. And every year, half of the children's offering is given to a charity. And this year, it's going to go to a charity called WARM, W-A-R-M. And it stands for Worcester Alliance for Refugee Ministry. And the kids want to help other kids in need. And this was a, a great um, organization that helps refugees families come into Worcester they redo their apartments and they they furnish them from the beds to the bureaus to silverware all up and toys for the kids and they help bring them and welcome them into American life so thank you for the children's offering and that will be um, given to them um, as you see, we have a, a summer program coming up. It's called Digging In to the Life of Jesus. This is a new summer program that we're trying. It is a one-room, mixed-age uh, curriculum, and I'm very excited about it. We're going to start at Jesus' birth. Where else, right? And then we're going to go through to his first miracle. So we have a few people signed up to help teach. It just requires one Sunday. I have a lesson and a video. And obviously, we have lots of kids to come. So please help sign up for July and August for that program. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne, and everyone. Uh, love our Sunday school. Is it hot in here? Is it just me? <laughs> now, we're going to have, uh, it's, the sun has gone down a little bit, so it's a little shady. We are going to have our picnic afterwards, and uh, um, I don't mind getting wet, kids, uh, but can I just tell you something? If you get me wet, I will probably get you wet. So um, a little bit of water will be fun, but... We have a special treat this morning. Uh, one of the ministries we have partnered with and uh, support, um, and who actually helped us out with youth ministry for one year, uh, is Mission E4. And Taryn Long, who was actually our youth director for uh, one year, uh, a couple years ago, um, is here today representing Mission E4 to tell us about an opportunity we have to not only care for our kids here, but to care for uh, less fortunate kids around the world. Um, he has a video, I'm not sure if it's gonna play, but we're going to give it a shot. You want me to just play it first, Karen, before you come up? Uh, if you don't mind, I'll talk, I'll talk first. How are you going to do this morning? Good. I'll use the mic once I get up here, although I can be pretty loud working with kids and kids. Can you sing it, Taryn, or sing the sing what I'm going to talk yeah. about? I could try. I don't know if everybody would appreciate that, though. So, um, well, like Pastor John said, my name's Taryn, and I work with a group called Mission E4, uh, which is a 
local nonprofit. Uh, we're actually based right out of Hubbardston, uh, Massachusetts, and we do work here in central Massachusetts and around the world. Uh, we work in about seven or eight different countries. Um, so I want to thank Pastor John for letting me come and visit and the missions committee, give me the opportunity to come and share with you guys. Um, really, really excited about Children's Sunday. It's so cool seeing all the kids uh, share and sing and uh, share different stories and other things going on. Um, I figured since it's Children's Sunday, I'll start with a couple of questions for the kids. Um, so how many of you kids ate breakfast this morning? Hopefully most of you, right? How many of you guys plan to eat lunch today? Awesome. How many of you guys go to school? Very cool. So did you guys know that there's actually places around the world where kids don't have an opportunity to go to school? Um, one of the places that Mission E4 works in is in Haiti, which is south of Florida. It's in the Caribbean. And less than half of the children in Haiti have an opportunity to go to school. Um, and I asked you guys, how many of you guys had a chance to eat today, right, or planning on eating? Um, most of the kids in Haiti don't even get one meal a day. And if they get a meal a day, a lot of times all that they have for their whole family is just a pot of boiled bananas. Could you imagine just eating a boiled banana that was the only thing you ate all day, right? And think about that as parents, if all you were able to give to your children today was a boiled banana. Right? That'd be pretty hard. Or if your kids never had the opportunity to go to school and get an education. Um, so one of the things that Mission E4 does in Haiti is we actually work in schools. We have about 1,900 children um, in school in Haiti. We have five elementary schools. We have a high school. We have a couple of orphanages. We have medical clinics. And right now we have about 1,400 of those kids that are sponsored. And that's the way that these kids are able to go to school is through a child sponsorship program. And so it's $35 a month to sponsor a child, and that allows these children to be able to go to school, to get a hot meal every day, um, to get a Christian education, to be able to learn about the Lord, to be able to grow up understanding how to change their culture and their country, free medical care, all sorts of other things. Um, so I wanted to share really two opportunities with you guys this morning, not only child sponsorship, but two opportunities to get involved in these children's lives that may not have an opportunity otherwise. Um, the first is child sponsorship, sponsoring a child. Um, I have about 10 kids downstairs that need sponsors. I have some pictures of them. Um, for anybody who's interested in that, you can come down after service and talk with myself or uh, Marianne or Megan Rokiki. They've actually came to Haiti with me in April recently. Um, and that's the second way to get involved is to come on a trip to Haiti. And you guys can actually come um, and see the work that Mission E4 is doing. And I think that's one of the things that's really cool about Mission E4 is, first of all, that it's local. You can get involved locally. But second of all, you actually can come and see the kids. If you choose to sponsor a child, you get to meet them while you're in Haiti. And if you can't come to Haiti, you know, for a lot of you kids who may not be able to go, you guys can actually write letters back and forth to them and correspond with them as well. So we're going to try to play this video. We'll see if it works or not. Um, the version that I emailed, I think, might have been a little large, so we'll see. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we're gonna thank you again. We're going to skip it, Taryn. Not a problem at all. Well, I will be downstairs after for anybody who has questions or is interested in sponsoring a child or going on a mission trip. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. And it is our plan, God willing, to make our high school mission trip next year to be to Haiti. We've been talking about it for years. The confirmation kids seem excited about it. Um, I know some parents are like, I'm not so excited about that. But with the support of like Mission E4 and uh, Doug Waite, who's also been on medical um, missions to Haiti, I think now's the time. So that'll be our plan next year. So what a wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Taryn. See him downstairs, a chance to bless kids, um, just like our own kids are blessed. What's next? Seems like we gotta sing a song, right? Prayers of the kids, pre-K through grade five. Grades one to three.
This is part of our first and second and third grade class, and they've created posters to say what they are thankful for. And I'm going to go down the line. I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for my dog. Hello, people. I am thankful for music. I am thankful for family. I'm thankful for clothes. I'm thankful for pizza. <laughs> I am thankful for my Xbox because it has Skyland and Imagination. I'm thankful for my family. I thank you for the world. I'm thankful for dinosaurs. I'm thankful for myself. I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for food. I'm thankful for food, rain, and Sun. Thank you. Lord, yeah, the so Lord's Prayer. All my, my K, my pre K, my first, second, one up, the Lord's Prayer with us. Thank you, kids. I know it's hot, and uh, I don't want to fill the place with more hot air. 
Um, but I want to reflect with you just for a couple of minutes on something really important. Parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, friends. You all know the story, which I won't read. This, this picture kind of illustrates it in a modern way. Jesus loved kids. And Jesus one day had parents wanting to bring their kids to Jesus. You know the story. And the disciples said he doesn't have time. And what did Jesus say? Of course I have time. He said, let those children come to me. And don't hinder them from coming to me. Because of such belong the kingdom of God. Parents, grandparents, adults, everybody. Children are so important to Jesus. And that's why they're important to us as a church. And it's so important that we bring our kids to Jesus. Now, where is Jesus? Well, I hope he's here present with us. I believe he is. And when, we, when you bring your children here on Sundays for them to sing the songs and to hear the gospel and to hear about Jesus and the Bible, you bring your kids to Jesus to be prayed for, to learn about God's love, to learn about the way God wants us to live and how he forgives us, and you bring your kids to Jesus. But one hour or an hour and 27 minutes on a Sunday is not enough. And don't worry, I'm not talking about making the service even longer. We need to bring our kids to Jesus on a more regular basis. Because where does Jesus really live? I hope parents, moms and dads, grandparents, he lives in you. And if he doesn't live in you, make that your first priority. Say, Jesus, I need you in me so that I can bring my kids to you through me. I pray, parents, that Jesus shines from you. I know you're not perfect. Trust me, I'm not perfect. And as the kids get closer and closer to teenage years, nothing brings it out more than to know you're not a perfect parent. And you've made some mistakes along the way. But nonetheless, you will illustrate to your kids the presence of God and who Jesus is more than anything else in their life. More than church, more than Sunday school. So parents and grandparents and caregivers, you will be Jesus to your kids. So I pray that you would take that seriously. Don't be overwhelmed by it. But cultivate your relationship with God. Grow in your love for God. And that will overflow into your kids' lives. I know life is busy, and I know there's some families that might be here today that are busy because of work schedules, because of sports schedules, and things happen. But listen, I've told this to some parents. Because you love the Lord and it's real to you, your faith is going to have a greater impact on your kids than anything in church. They don't take that as a license that people who drift from church and too far from the community tend to drift from their faith too. The other way you can bring your kids to Jesus is to pray for them. I hope you pray for your children regularly. And if not, start praying for them. And grandparents, pray for your grandkids. It's a rough world out there. You see the, the prayer paragraph I put in the back of the bulletin? Pray for them as they grow. We're growing increasingly in a culture that doesn't really have a lot of room or thought about God or about Jesus. Pray that they would grab onto that and grow in that as they grow. And pray for our teens. It is tough. I love that we have so many teens, but those who are parents of teenagers know it's a difficult age. And it's a hard age to get our kids to come to church and embrace the faith that so delighted them when they were little. So pray for them as they're in this very important formational age. Bring our kids, our little ones, our middle-aged ones, our teens to Jesus through prayer, through your life, through the church. God loves them. And I think, I love kids. I don't remember always loving kids, to be honest with you. But I think I love kids because Jesus lives in me. And Jesus loves kids. So let's bring those kids to Jesus. And let's not hinder them. Let it not be in our thoughts that we're too busy. That Jesus is too busy. That religion is for older folks. Let's bring kids to Jesus. And not just our own kids. But let's pray for the kids in our kids' schools and in our neighborhoods that they too would know the love of God. Let's stand together and sing. Uh, the hymn we're going to sing this morning is kind of our theme for the day. Uh, and it's from the old Pilgrim Hymnal because I like this tune better. All things bright and beautiful. It's on the insert inside your bulletin. <laughs>
Our main message this morning comes from our fourth and fifth grade class who want to remind us that of all that God has created, the most important thing He's created is us. And that we are to love one another and to love Him. Fourth and fifth grade? Don't be shy. Mrs. Burroughs is looking for you. We begin our message with a reading of, from God's word about his care for us. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will feel no evil, fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Therefore, as God cares so deeply for us, he calls us to love and care for others. A reading from John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. Jesus said, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. However, sometimes we fail to do this. Fourth down ten yards ago. The other team wins. should have considered another way. A reading from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 to 15. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Live in peace with each other, and we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone, make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. As believers, we are to encourage each other in Christ to be loving and to do good deeds. To speak kind words, we ought to share in our blessings with others. Show hospitality and praise God who he is and what he has done for his people. Fourth down, ten yards to go. And the other team wins. All right, Nick, it was okay. You could have done better, but that's right. Next game. Don't get it next time. 
Sometimes it happens. Nice try, bro. <laughs> Thanks. A final reading from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the, the day approaching. Let us come together as followers of Christ and show our kindness and love. And remember that we love because he first loved us. tell you something powerful about that, kids. If you really do that, if you return kindness and love like that, you will be worshiping God in a greater way than any song or any worship service you could ever go. Thank you for that lesson, and I hope you guys really live that out. I hope we all do. Thank you. Remember the words of Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us now give in proportion to all the blessings God has bestowed upon us. offering. Yes. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we offer these gifts to you. 
We offer our noise to you. We offer ourselves to you. We thank you for the great gifts you've given us, Lord. Receive these, our offerings to you. Not only our cash and our checks, but ourselves and our children and our lives. Lord, we give them to you. Use this money to strengthen the ministry of your church, to spread the gospel and help those in need across the street and to the ends of the earth until you come again in all your glory. In Jesus' name and all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. All right on the altar, okay? We have a very special treat to finish our worship service this morning. Uh, you may be seated um, so that you can see the kids who are going to be up singing. Um, <laughs> Our youth singers, our choirs. You will probably recognize the song. You probably won't recognize the original lyrics made by Laura. But you can sing along with the kids if you'd like. and then I want all the kids up front. But I don't want you to get burned here, so hold on. All right, 
Samantha, I want you to stand right here, right in the middle, second step. Hold that up, keep it burning. Kids, come on up, everybody. Come up and stand with me and face, face your parents. Come all, come all the way up here, up with me. William, up with me. I saw you in the video. Got everybody? Do we love these kids? Yes. We love these kids. We're going to go out and have a good time on our backyard playing and having fun and eating food, but let's leave with a blessing. And we are going to ask the Lord to bless these children. Would you join me? In prayer, I'm going to raise my hands over these kids. If you're a person who raises your hands for blessings, you can do the same thing. But join me in prayer. Kids, would you close your eyes and bow your heads? And let's pray. Dear God in heaven, you are a good God. And we thank you for all your many good gifts. And today, Lord, we thank you for the gift of children. And we thank you especially for these children, Lord. We ask your blessings to be upon them and the others they represent who are the children that call this church their home. Lord, bless them as they grow. Indeed, protect them from the evil one and all that's out there that would try to harm them. Help them to grow in character and in love. Forgive them when they fail. Heal them when they fall. And Lord, help them to grow knowing your love and to grow to believe in you and to carry on the gospel that we, the adults of this generation, have been entrusted with, and we entrust to them. So Lord, bless them. May their lives be full of joy, full of love, full of peace, full of your presence on this day and all the days of their lives, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 That's it, kids. We're done. Thank you for a wonderful service. We can go outside. Don't forget to bring your parents along.